What's up, everybody? Welcome to another episode of the Absolute Strength Podcast. I'm your host, Kyle Hunt, and we're back with another episode. And today's guest is Ryan Fisher, former CrossFit competitor, gym owner. This was a really cool episode, and I know I say that a lot. So I probably, every time I say that, you're probably like, oh, here we go. Kyle thinks every one of these podcasts are really cool, which, which mind you, about 98% of them I truly believe that. They're very cool. I have such a great time recording these episodes. But this one specifically was was pretty cool because we went into some stuff that I didn't know. Like, I didn't know Ryan's full story. You know know how you follow people on Instagram, you you come across their their profile, their page, for, for whatever reason, and then you almost, without really knowing the background or really looking into the background, you kind of have this, like, idea in in your head of who they are. But then... You hear them on a podcast or you sit down to do a podcast with them and you dig so much deeper. And this is one of the wildest success stories you'll ever hear. Seriously, one of the wildest success stories you'll ever hear. And this is a super motivating episode, but it's not a serious episode in the sense that, you know, a lot of times when you hear like a a podcast or YouTube video or something that's very motivating, it it almost comes across as super serious and not always the most entertaining. It's like, oh, you got to be really focused when when you're listening to it. This this episode's like one of those, it's weird. Like you're going to be motivated at the end of it. You're like, oh, wow, I'm like super excited and motivated and pumped up and fired up to go chase my dreams. (laughs) But you're also going to be laughing the whole time. So we kind of have a cool uh, mix of entertainment and, and motivational value in this one. But this one's a great episode, one of my favorite episodes, and I'm gonna I'm just gonna get to it. If, of course, if you enjoy this episode, if you enjoy any of the Absolute Strength podcast episodes, as always, please just tell one friend, tell one of your friends about the episode or about the podcast. I'll be gr- I'll always be grateful for that, super grateful for that, and make sure you're subscribed. I know that kind of seems obvious, but if you're not subscribed on iTunes, Google Play, Stitcher, YouTube, or whatever, you never know when I'm going to put out these episodes, because sometimes I have three, four weeks, sometimes it's only once or twice a week, I don't really have a schedule per se, I always try my best to always have at least one episode on a Friday, always have you know that, that Friday episode, really just because that's when I started the, the podcast couple years ago, it was once a week on Friday. So I kind of want to keep to our roots to always have a a Friday episode, but sometimes, shit, I'll post them any day of the week. So make sure you subscribe so you don't miss any episodes. PRbreaker.com, hunt 10 for a discount on the best pre-workout on the market. Absolute strength program. All that shit is in the info box. All right, let's get to the episode. Ryan Fisher. What's going on, man? Hey, um, just sitting here in Orange County in my office. You got orange got nice, feeling too. Got a nice little workout in with my crew, and yeah. um, I'm excited to talk on the podcast. We've been well, trying to do this for a couple weeks now. I say it's been a couple weeks. This one has to be fucking fire because we've been <laughs> going back and forth on it. And then at the last minute, I almost dropped the ball. I wrote down your number wrong. Yeah, totally. <laughs> and I was like, hey, dude, I'm, I, I got to go. That's the I took pre workout just for this podcast. So, oh, yeah. because of that, I was getting antsy. Yeah. Uh, why didn't I just copy and paste? <laughs> <laughs> Shit, dude. So, uh, let's get into it a little bit. Let's get into your story. You're telling me before we went live here that you have a pretty interesting uh, story how you started the gym. Yeah. I think, um, I think I have a much more interesting story than most, most gym owners, most, um, most people in the CrossFit realm in general. I think everybody knows Ryan Fisher as uh, probably the guy who tried to kill a judge in 2013. Yeah. It was pretty, uh, that, pretty that sad. So did, so did you tell that story on the Wadcast podcast? They asked me specifically to tell that story because it was like a huge moment in all of CrossFit. Yeah. Where like, so that's where I heard you on. I got like publicly shamed, which was like, I think just a little bit over the top. What happened? It was like you were you were doing a movement and they, you kept getting um, no repped. Yeah, it was like it was twenty one fifteen nine. It was deadlifts at three fifteen and thirty inch box jumps. And I was in, I want to say third place um, going into that event. I was about to win that event, and then I would have been in top three no matter what and went to the games. 
So it was definitely my, the best shape I was in out of all my years of going to regionals. I've been to regionals seven times and I was really, really confident. And then I just felt that whole moment slip away. To be honest, I tell everybody the same thing. I don't even remember saying that to the judge, to be honest. Really? And I'm just freaking out because it's a three minute workout and all these reps are getting no reps. And I have a 600 pound deadlift and 315 just doesn't feel that heavy to me. I'm going fast because it's fucking light. Yeah. Yeah. To me, it's light. Right. So I'm flying. And I, in my opinion, I mean, even at the end of the thing, that guy, Boz, the head judge was like, you know what, dude, you didn't do anything wrong, but we're, it already happened and there's nothing we're going to do about it. So go fuck yourself. And I was like, go fuck myself. Huh? I was like, this is fucking ridiculous. Like, if I was anybody else, this would never happen. And I don't understand why this is happening to me. And it's not like I still never want to play that card. Like, Oh, poor me type of thing Mm -hmm. because absolutely not poor me. Like my life is great right now. And I moved on from that situation the best I could put my head down and I just ran through it. And, um, I think a lot of other people probably would have been like, fuck, I'm screwed. Like CrossFit just shamed me Uh and I'm, and I'm screwed and this and that. So uh, what happened? You weren't like bringing your shoulders behind the bar. Is that what it was? They thought I was bouncing the weights because I was going so fast, but it was also the first year they introduced competition plates. Uh Uh-huh. Those things don't fucking bounce. No, they don't really bounce. It doesn't bounce. So like, I'm I'm, like, so you, there's a video on YouTube right now that you can watch with a hundred thousand views on it. Uh Uh-huh. And it's a, it's of me like getting no reps. You just type in Ryan Fisher, no rep. And you'll see my, like I try purposely to keep my elbows straight and just go as fast as I can up and down. Mm -hmm. And there's people legit right next to me actually bouncing it. And people next to me that aren't even bending their hips. Like they're they're not bending their knees. They're literally hinging at their hips and smashing it on the ground Yeah, and doing way worse than I'm doing. Like it's unbelievable, but like it just happens. It just happens. It is what it is. Yeah. Yeah. Even the year we did strict muscle ups, you know, you have people doing, like kipping ones and getting away with it. Yeah. I mean, that's, that's just like hard to judge, you know? Yeah. It's, in, it's insane. But anyway, um, going into that in 2000, like 12, I had first moved to California and I had taken a job full time to be the manager slash programmer slash like everything, but the owner of the gym in San Diego. And I was super stoked. I was living in Utah at the time. Um, I was on the Olympic bobsled team in 2010. Oh, wow. I didn't know that. So I trained in Utah and I was training with the Olympic team. I tore my hamstring, didn't really get to go to the Olympics, but I was like on this fucking awesome team for, you know, a couple of years going into it. And then CrossFit, you know, happened for, for lack of a longer story. Yeah, yeah. And then I moved to California and I started working at this gym. I was super pumped. And then I just didn't like the flow of how the gym was going. I started like losing a lot of like privileges of like programming because the lady who owned it wanted to do a lot of hero wads and a lot of like beat down like boot camp style. Yep. Which I was fine with coaching, but the members would complain to me and I was like, oh, I just don't want, I don't, I don't want to be like taken into account for ha- having terrible programming. Yeah, that's a tough situation. It's not me. It's it's yeah. her, you know? So, you know, it, it turned into this big thing. And I was like, you know what? Fuck this. I quit. And like in my head, I'm like, oh, it's fine. I'm going to get another job, you know, wherever I want. It's going to yeah. be fine. What and year was this? Fine. What's that? What year was that? This is 2012 now. Okay. The year before I went to regionals and, and uh, actually, you know what? It's 2011. All right. So it's 2011. Because then 2012, oh, we'll get into it, but this is 2011. And then, um, yeah, I was like, I'm going to go, I'm going to get a job at another gym. I'm, I'm a great coach. I'm a great athlete. It shouldn't be a big deal. I started walking at the time. CrossFit's still like huge, you know, like right now it's not as big. Like everybody like, knows what it is, but like, if you want to be part of a gym and no one knew you, it was like, no dude, like we don't hire people unless we know who they are. Like yeah. we don't hire people unless unless this or that. And I, and I remember just getting looked at like I was a fucking alien that just came to earth and you weren't allowed to talk to me. So mm-hmm. months of this went by and I never got a job. What and it got, it got to the point where I, one gym told me, you know what, like you can come hang out with us and you can work out with us 
and you know, like just come and work out. We feel yeah, bad. What we, type thing. we feel bad for you and you're, but you're a great dude to work out with. So come work out. And I'm like, all right, cool. The guy who owns the gym at the time, his name is, um, Anders Varner, who's now the, the host of Barbell Shrugs, Barbell Shrugs, which I'm yeah, yeah. part with now. And the other guy is Brian Borstein who makes programming and he's programmed for a lot of great athletes. So and he still owns the gym, Brian, but Anders is part of Barbell Shrug now. Mm-hmm. So I meet up with these guys, you know, they let me work out with them. Like four months go by and I, I, all my money that I saved is gone. Yeah. I was gonna say, what were you doing for money during that time? Dude, no. I was trying so hard to get a job. I actually got two cause I did really good in school and I got two jobs. One as the strength conditioning assistant at, at Stanford and another one at Notre, at Notre Dame. Oh shit. That'd be good. Good job. So I was like dope. Right. Yeah. Yeah. But I was like, all right, I got to reach out to them and ask them if I can get like free housing or free food or something. Right. Cause I have no money. Yeah. Yeah. And they wouldn't give me anything. It's just like, you know, you come, you work for free and hopefully you get a job in a year. Yeah. That's and pretty much nothing. how strength and conditioning works. Yeah, like no pay. And I was like, oh my God, this, I can't take these like dream jobs. That sucks. So I legitimately 100% lost everything I had. I had no apartment. I had all my shit packed up in my car and I was about to drive home, which is in New Jersey, which is a fucking far drive. Yeah, across the country. (laughs) Yeah. So this girl in the gym I was working out at who I didn't even know was like, you know what? You can stay on my couch until you get everything together. That's pretty interesting. <laughs> Some shit and I'm like, fuck, know. <laughs> I don't want to do this, but it's probably the only thing I have. Uh-huh. So right at this point, I have 200 bucks. I say yes. I stay on her couch. I'm there on her couch for about five months. Jesus. Like, <laughs> How was that? How'd that go? Dude, it was so weird. And I'm trying to get like, I'm really trying hard to get money and like get a job. And like nothing was happening for me. It really, really sucked. And I just, my mom was like, you should come home, go back to school, get a nice job that has security, like be a nurse or do something. And I was like really looking into it. And I was like, fuck, she's right. But I loved working out. I loved CrossFit. And it wasn't like, it wasn't like I'm going to make money from this. It was just like, I know I'm the fucking best CrossFitter in the world. And I want the world to see that I am like, I know that I am like, I watched these videos of rich Froning and this person and that person. And I was like, I can fucking do that. And I just beat that time like today in the gym. Like, let's fucking go. Let's go. Uh So, um, this competition while I'm on the couch came out, it's called the OC throwdown and it's here in orange County. And which is like an hour and a half North of San Diego where I was at the time. And they had this online qualifier where all the best guys in the world, pretty much minus Rich Froning, mm-hmm. all competed in an online competition to qualify for this workout, to, to, for this chant, for this big competition. Yeah, yeah. And it's the first time that Ryan Fisher, me, ever signed up for any competition. So I get second place in this online comp. And you, you have to submit videos if you get a really good score. So... I'm doing all my workouts. I have no shoes on because I have one pair of shoes and I didn't want to fuck them up. <laughs> so like Funny. everybody sees me doing these workouts barefoot and they're like, who the fuck is this guy? Yeah. And I, I got second place in the online competition. Like a fucking savage. Dude, they're literally like, this guy's insane. Yeah. So I'm getting pumped up. I'm like, yeah, 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 yeah. And then I find out it's $250 to sign up for a competition. For the actual competition. Yeah. So remember I told you I only had $200 when I when I, went, when I moved in with this girl, in that five-month period of me being on her couch, I didn't spend, like, any money on anything. Like, how did you, how did you, would you eat? So that's the, that's the embarrassing part that I have to admit. There's nothing, there's nothing for me to really do except tell you the truth, which was I stole all my food. I stole fucking where? everything, dude. I would go to Whole Foods and just get the most ridiculous amount of food and just go sit in the little seating area and just uh-huh. eat it. Just and I would it. just like, I would just walk by all the registers and then like make it seem like I paid at one of them and just sit down and eat and just hope that no one fucking said anything. And you did this for five months for five months. Like 
if, if you want to laugh about anything, I could say I ate better then than I ever did. I was probably. Gonna say, you, you probably because if you're gonna if you're gonna take it, you might as well just take the best shit. I was gonna say, yeah, you might as well just take the. Yeah, you're gonna gonna get in trouble no matter what. Yeah. Every once in a while, I would buy like a tea that was like a dollar. Mm-hmm. So I'd take all my shit. I'd sit down just so you can have go, the receipt. And then I'd go back to the register and buy a tea. So it just seemed like I was doing the right thing, you know, uh-huh. and it sucked and I felt shitty and, but I just, I didn't know what else to do. And then, um, the guy throwing on the competition calls me and he says, Hey man, you got second place in the online comp and now you're not going to the actual competition. I didn't see your name sign up. And I said, Hey, yeah, I, I can't afford the, the entry fee. It's 250 bucks. And he's like, what if we do like half? Like everyone's really excited to see you. And I'm like, Oh man, like, I don't know. I can't even do half. And then he's like, um, what's going on? I'm like, dude, I, I, I'm embarrassed to tell you, but like I steal food and I'm homeless and fucking, I literally have nothing. Yeah. And he's like, fuck. <laughs> <laughs> what do you say like, that? <laughs> Let's just have you come. And if you win, you can, and I'm like, deal. Yeah. So I go to, so I'm signed up for the competition. It's not for like another two months. Like I'm three months into this girl's couch right now, right? <laughs> so now I'm training for the competition. I'm getting super excited. I'm like, I'm going. This is going to be great. I'm going to be going up against like two of the people on the podium from the year before. The yeah, what, were the, games. what were the names? What were the guys that were going to be at, at the uh, At the time, if you, guys, if you guys know, it would be Nate Schrader, Blair Morrison, um, Patrick Burke. Mm-hmm. Um, Guido Trinidad. I think Noah Olson was there. Kenny Leverage. I mean, oh yeah, these names at the time were the biggest ones. Yeah, yeah. I mean, Blair Morrison. I, I want to say he got second or third of the games that year, the year before. Mm-hmm. I mean, there were massive names. Like it was, it was, ins- it was people that I had been watching on YouTube forever, and I was like looking up to them. And I, one, I had never seen them in person two, I definitely never competed against them. And I, I was like starstruck seeing them. Yeah. It was crazy. But going into this, right. I'm three months into the couch. I'm training. I'm at that gym. who's letting me work out for free. And this black guy is like walking out in front of the gym and he sees me with my shirt off. And he's like, dude, like I can make you a lot of money. And I'm like, Oh yeah. How's that? And he's like, so I manage strippers. <laughs> oh boy. <laughs> and I'm like, fuck, like how much money do they make? And he's like, Oh, a couple hundred bucks a night or whatever. And I'm like, dude, I'm in, let's just do <laughs> yeah. it. So I have to go and try out for this thing. And I'm like, he's teaching me how to like be a stripper. It has a tryout process. Dude. It was so embarrassing. It was like such a low point in my life. I was like, I cannot believe I'm here right now. I'm doing this. For a guy, no less. He's yeah. making me like I feel so awkward. What and was the, uh, what'd you have to do to try out? Like, what was the dude? So this guy is actually like a drag queen. So when I saw him, he he gave me an address to go to to like to meet up with him and do like all this like preparation before I. Oh, go he's like going to train you for it. But when I go to see him, he's act, he's actually a girl. Oh my gosh, he's he's dressed up as a girl. I'm like, oh my god, this is so fucking weird. This just got even more weird. Yeah. But I literally have no option. So what if am I? It wasn't do? weird enough. Now it's really fucking weird, dude. I actually had to give this guy girl thing a fucking like, like a lap dance. Like, yeah, it was absurd. Like, I went from stealing food, giving fucking lap dances to guys who are girls, and like all this craziness, right? I mean, like, it, you it, you just can't get any lower. You couldn't make this shit up. You can't. It's impossible. <laughs> so. I'm like, oh my God, my life fucking sucks, you know? So I go to this competition. So like, I'm getting ready to do my first show as a stripper. Yeah. And it's the day after the throwdown, the OC throwdown, the big so, event. So you got the job. I got the job. I go to the event as the, for the throwdown and I get second place. Who won? With Tommy Hackenbrook. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. Yep. And then it was me and I think like Nate Schrader. And then like Pat Burke and like a bunch of other badass dudes. But that moment changed my life. And I got sponsored by Progenix and I got a job at a gym in Los Angeles. And then I met a ton of people and people were just blowing me up. And like Instagram didn't even exist yet. So I didn't even, I didn't get that. I probably would have had a million followers at the time. 
Uh-huh. And then, um, yeah, it was crazy. And then like all this stuff happened and I just started just getting blown up and it was great and everything worked out and I never had to strip. <laughs> I never had to go and do it, which was awesome. Um, but yeah, it was just like one of those things where you, you think everything is going to go to shit and you, you put all your chips on black and you just fucking roll the dice and, I'm so, so thankful and grateful for the fact that everything worked out for me. Yeah. And then from there, I was personal training somebody in a gym that I was working at. That person wound up being the person who actually created MySpace. Holy shit. Yeah. And he gave me like a million dollars to open my dream gym, which I did, which is now called Chalk. And from there... I built the sickest gym and from like from the beginning, like the very first day, I always thought it was really weird when you go to a gym and you can go to their website and see their workout. Like it was always exciting to go to another gym's yeah. website and be like, Oh, I want to see what they're doing for their, for their workouts. And you cherry pick here and cherry pick there or whatever. But I, I always had a really interesting way of making workouts. Like whenever you do a workout with, with me, like anybody can always say like, Oh man, whatever I worked out with Ryan, it was fucking the coolest workout yeah, yeah. or he fucking killed me or whatever. Right. But like, it's never the same as working out with someone else. I just have a very strange way. It's almost like I'm on drugs the way I think of it. It's yeah. like very it's strange. Like you're, you're probably like super creative with it. That's probably the creativity side. Yeah. Like I get really, really into it. And like, just for me to make one week of workouts for my gym might take me like five hours. Yeah. You really get into it. That's good. Yeah. It might take me legitimately five hours. Like, so it's, it's interesting. And then, I never really thought about what I was really doing. I just was like, I opened this gym. I worked my fucking ass off. I did not trust anyone to work for me. So what I did was I actually coached every single class myself for two months. Jesus, that must've been a long days. 5 a.m. was the first class and 7.45 p.m. was the last one. And I had 10 classes a day. And I had two privates every day. And then I also like, did all the billing. I made the workouts. I did the website. I answered all the phone calls. I all the did, little things, probably did all the little things people need to think about, like cleaning and picking. Yeah. Up and, and I trained supplies. And, I, what I do? Um, Oh, I was training for regionals. Yeah. So it was, it was crazy. Like I'd have like a 10 minute break between classes and I would just put two twenty five on the bar and do three power cleans and three muscle ups in the same minute, every minute on the minute for 10 minutes. And that'd be my workout of the day. Yeah. Like I used to do that workout like all the time. And then like cold, 225 on the bar, just let's go, let's go. And I'd be like, oh, I'm dead. And I'm like, all right, class, here we go. You only got 10 minutes, you can't warm up. <laughs> Dude, it was crazy. So all that happened. And then like it's been four years now. May 1st was my four-year anniversary. But six months ago, I started getting tired of like people saying, you know, what's your workout today? Or like, I really want to know what you do that makes your gym like so successful. Cause like people see my gym and they're like, dude, this guy's gym is insane. Like I have a 5,500 square foot gym. My floor space is only 3,500 square feet and I have 365 members. Where, uh, where's this at? It's in orange County. Okay. In in Newport beach. Okay. Sick. So we're in one of the most saturated markets in the world. Um, and everybody around us has like a hundred members. And I have like almost 400, yeah, which insane. is insane. So like people want to know what's going on. And I have, I post Instagram videos and everyone is just like, what the fuck is going on there? So one day I was like, I wonder if anybody would like follow my programming if I put it online, but they're going to have to pay for it. Like I really wanted to make it like a hundred bucks a month or something. Right. But I was like, I guess the reality of it is, like no one's going to pay that. So I'll, I'll make it $20. I fucking hate that it's $20. It's so much work, but let's see if anyone buys it. And a lot of people hit me up all the time. So we'll just see. And it has exploded, dude. There's like a thousand gyms right now that follow my online program. That's insane. That's awesome. It's it's insane. And like the gym now has become like a worldwide brand. And I've, I've been, um, I've been asked to make like physical fitness programs for the U S army. I'm like, I'm in negotiations right now with Costco to do like a health and wellness program. Like 
there's just so many incredible things that have come out of it. I have my own podcast now that is like doing incredibly well. And like, my name is like someone that, you know, people want to come to and ask for advice. And it just fucking literally has never hit me yet. Like, it's awesome. I'm not the guy who's just like, Oh yeah, let's just keep going and making money and this and that. It's just like every day I wake up and I'm like, I can't believe this is my life. Like there's times I legitimately just want to like, I literally want to cry because I'm so happy. Well, this is a great story. I love your, love like, your I almost story. have tears right now talking about it. I'm yeah. just like, it's fucking insane how much your life can change. If you really, 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 really fucking care about it. And you really, really want something to work for you. I mean, fuck. I almost, I mean, I fucking stripped for a gay dude. Yeah. I stole my food. <laughs> well, there were, there were so many opportunities for you to, to pack it up, to quit. Oh, totally. And it was hard. I really wanted to, but I didn't want to have, it's not that I didn't want the nine to five. I just like, I didn't want to do something that I didn't really want to do. Yeah. That see that is that's so critical because people a lot of people listening right now probably were you know, not in the you know they probably weren't stealing food from Whole Foods and stripping for uh, <laughs> a, a gay dude but a lot of people probably got in a situation where they 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 wanted to do something but it got hard they quit and then they settled they settled it's it just I mean I'm Dude, not settling I'm not is judgment but it that's that's how you get you know in places where you don't want to be yeah. I think everyone has a little bit of like a settle factor in their body where like, even like whether it's a girlfriend or a job or, you know, like maybe a friend who does something that always kind of bothers you, but then such a good friend. You're like, all right, I'm just going to let it go. Let it go. But I'm like the type of guy who like, I'll let it settle for only so long. Like I'm only like a settler for like a week or two. Like it's Mm -hmm. even in my gym, I'll watch people like, do something wrong that kind of bothers me. And it, it, it only lasts like a couple days. And then I'm like very direct. People are always like, dude, you are fucking direct. And I'm just like, well, I don't care if I hurt your feelings in reality, because you'll know, like from that one experience, you'll never forget it. And like, mm-hmm. I try to tell everybody like my, my biggest thing is when I meet somebody, like I never want to be forgotten in terms of like, Oh, I met all these fitness people. And like, I can't remember who my favorite one was or maybe my least favorite one was or whatever. I just want to be like, Oh damn. When I went, when I met Ryan, he was fucking, I remember him. Like he remember was, that dude. Yeah. He was very interesting <laughs> or like, he was very like focused on something or he had a lot of energy or, or something. Like I want to have something that you remember that you're like, okay, I, I know this guy for sure. Well, a lot of times too, when you meet somebody and they actually are able to change the way you feel, that's how people remember you. They remember how you made them feel. They don't, they won't, they won't remember like little things like, Oh man, that dude, but he was really smart. He gave me like this piece of information or, or this, but if you like, whether it's through intensity or just enthusiasm or passion, if you can, you know, give that to somebody else and like make them feel that they'll always remember you for that. And that's my biggest thing. Like on my, my personal podcast, like a lot of the shows that I try to do, I want them to all be like very inspiring on some level. So I won't do a show just because you're really popular or anything like that. Like you got to have a cool story for me or I'm not going to have you on the show. Yeah. I'd rather like not have a lot of podcasts and have podcasts that are mediocre. Yeah. I pretty much just pick people. I we were even talking about this before we went live. I just pick people I see on social media or come in you know, contact with. I'm like, man, I want to have a conversation with them. That's it. Yeah. That's simple. That's the coolest thing about the podcast is like, I get to talk. To, I just, I just did one yesterday in Venice beach in California. Mm-hmm. Well, I'm in California, but, uh, where are you at actually? So I'm from New York, but I live in South Carolina now. Oh, okay, cool. Yeah. Um, so I got to talk to the, the owner of fucking the Spartan race. Oh, that's and then, uh, Joe DeSena. Yeah. Joe D. And then yeah, we yeah. got to talk about like, you know, how that whole, how that whole thing got created and now he's on to other projects and, and then like all these other people that you get to talk to, it's almost like you just read 20 books and you had one guy just summarize all of it for you yeah and you just keep moving on and it's just like the greatest thing and now i could care less about ever watching something on tv like i'm all about the podcast life me too yeah i love i love making them love listening to them and when i'm not like when i'm not creating them i'm listening to pe- people on other podcasts so i can get future guest ideas yeah for sure 
you know, that's it's what I do. Super fun. So it, it's like, it's the future in my opinion. I think everyone says YouTube's the future, but you still have to watch YouTube. Like I you can be in your car and, and listen to, listen to a podcast. Right? Yeah, I think, I think podcasts are more the future than YouTube. I think YouTube, um, I don't know. YouTube's in a, in a weird spot. Like it, I think it peaked especially maybe just in fitness anyways it like peaked it was like really cool but then again you still have to watch it like podcast yeah. what's cool about that especially for guys like you and me that are busy we can listen to a podcast while we're doing something else while we're driving driving around going to get groceries making food yeah, or whatever. Totally. we can't sit and watch a youtube video while we're driving or something yeah it's harder definitely harder to do <clears throat> yeah if i'm gonna if i'm gonna sit down and watch something it's gonna it better be good <laughs> it better blow me away i'm gonna yeah for sure time to do it you know it's, it's okay. actually interesting you, you have to like i'll like flow through some of my favorite podcasts i might miss a really good one just because they just don't title it the white title, the right way yeah yeah well same thing with youtube too like titles and thumbnails like it's that's how you get people to watch it you know you can miss good content i get so sad like on my social media people just if it's not a good thumbnail then you get no views yep. so like you have a thumbnail of your ad is popping out and everybody's stoked on it yeah and the video can be shit but yeah, <laughs> that's all totally shit. Yeah, it's <laughs> terrible. So, what's your, what's your uh, what's your training like these days? What do you train like? So, I used to be a complete maniac, um, and I was training on the on the Olympic team for different things. And then i I actually for the Olympic stuff, I did skeleton for multiple years before I did bobsled. Mm-hmm. And so, I was always a really good athlete in what high school. Did play, I did. What did you play in high school? In high school. I ran track, cross country, played lacrosse, played football. I did everything. Did everything. And I was a I was a varsity athlete from my freshman year all the way to my senior year in every single sport that I did, which was like unheard of. Yeah. And um, I think my my biggest claim to fame in high school would be I ran a ten flat two mile as a sophomore. So I just always had like this crazy engine, mm-hmm. and especially growing up in a house where I had five brothers and sisters in my house. I actually have seven brothers and sisters, but five of us who lived in the house or not five of us, but five of them who lived in the house and my mom and my stepdad all smoked. Oh, wow. <laughs> and I had, I had like, because of secondhand smoke, I had like induced asthma. I was gonna say, like you bron- probably, you for sure had asthma and bronchitis and shit. And like, somehow I was this freak athlete and it just, I've always had that crazy ability to breathe, even if I don't even do like endurance work. But so now, um, seven years of regionals, my knee's been pretty shot. I tore it snowboarding. I tore my ACL and shredded everything in there. And ever since then, it's just like never been the same. Mm-hmm. I think I just had a bad surgeon maybe. Cause I talked to Scott Panchik and he's had a couple ACL surgeries too, but he's like still really fucking good. I was going to say, and you see guys in like the NFL, they tear an ACL, they're right back going good next year. I don't understand it because mine is not like that at all. And I've, I've had MRIs on it and stuff. And they're like, Hey man, you just don't have anything left in there. Like your cartilage and your meniscus is gone. Mm-hmm. So there's nothing to really repair in mine. I think mine just kind of degenerated over time, which really sucks. And I think that was a genetic thing or from, from I'm assuming, Yeah, I'm assuming like, and I'm super down to get surgery on it and fix it, but there's nothing for me except a knee replacement. So at this point, I've just been like kind of forced to focus on the business side of things, which really, really hurt my inner soul for a while. I can imagine. Deep That's down fun. inside, I want to be an athlete. And I even thought about like competing in triathlons and doing like swim, bike, run, but I can't run. So, yeah. cause like that really fucks my knee up or like maybe doing like downhill mountain biking or like, I'm always like, I want to compete in something, but the, the business stuff is actually like super, super rewarding. I get emails all the time. People are like, Hey man, like my gym follows your online programming and we are fucking killing it. And we're so happy and thankful. I have my 50 kettlebell swings a day challenge. If you've seen that on social media and I've been tagged in over 50 different countries in the last month of people doing them all over the place. And it's so cool to me. And then I do like business consulting and different things like that. And it, it's, it, it actually has its own reward. Like I never thought that it'd be something I would really care about. But when you eventually are, when you eventually have the power to change someone's business or change someone's outlook on what they're doing and be able to change them in a different way besides fitness, like you're changing them, you know, as far as like becoming a better business person, that's yeah, really yeah. cool too. Can change their family change like yeah. their future generations. It's wild. 
How did so my training going back? My training right now is I hop in classes. Yeah, I love I love working out with my class. I I truly follow the program that I give to the gym, and um and that's pretty much it. I might do a few bicep curls here and there. <laughs> I was gonna say you're looking pretty jacked on uh, Insta. <laughs> I always try, you know. I'm really really strict with my diet, so that that helps a lot. And and yeah, I don't go overboard anymore. Like it's not something I really like to do, and I actually have a ton of people on my podcast, scientists and stuff talking about, you know, why you shouldn't be working out like crazy and how much do you really need to work out to keep what you have? Yeah. I think the biggest thing that people, they don't realize is like, once you get to where you want to be, maintaining it is not nearly as, as difficult as it is to get there. Like once you get there, like you can show for a little bit like you can work out like probably three days a week and be cool. Yeah. It's a lot easier to maintain than it is to build the mountain, climb the mountain, you know? Definitely, definitely, definitely. But everyone is just, I tell people all the time, like, it's, it's like a joke, but it's also real, is that I think, I think Rich Browning ruined CrossFit. Oh, yeah. Well, because it was like, um, again, I think people romanticize the idea of he trained like all day long. Yeah. But because he won so much, everyone's like, oh, that's what I need to do. And it's yeah. like, well, like, yes and no. The thing is, like, I had someone on my podcast, Brian Borstein. He's actually the, the owner of that gym that I worked at when I was mm-hmm. homeless. And uh, he was calling it, like, um, a lot of the stuff that Rich, Rich Froning is doing is practice. Yep. And he's, like, he's basically on the court just throwing free throws. It's not really a, it's not really high-intensity stuff he's doing all the time. Like, he's doing, like, two or three squat cleans at 185 on the minute, mm-hmm. which is, like, nothing for him. He squat, he can clean, like, 400 pounds. Yeah. So but for him practice. to do two or three reps at 185 is like 40, 50 percent effort. So it's him shooting free throws, and he's just like he's working on form, and he's just getting his his you know his uh, volume in. But he's not always massacring himself like everybody else is now. Like he does have some sort of thought process behind it. But that video of him working out all day just went viral in such a way where everybody's like, that's what I want to do. That's what I need to do. And well, again, too, I think what people miss too, is a lot of it, like you said, it was just practice, but a lot of it was just like play, you know what yeah. I mean? It wasn't like he was going in and absolutely destroying himself for eight hours straight. Like that's not what he was doing. Yeah. You know? And yeah, it's, he does, it does seem like he has a pretty cool life though. Oh, it definitely doesn't suck. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. For definitely sure. He's, nice. Yeah, that that is a rad life. He doesn't have to do anything ever again. Yeah, he just like I always watch like his shit, and I'm like, oh my god, like that just seems like it would be so fun. And there's always like imagine, a ton of people around. Like it's always like all his friends are there always. Yeah, like, all, at all times. I just can't imagine how you could work out that much all day every day and be cool. I just don't get it. I don't know either. Like you think I, I think I would. All, it's like I don't know. I just I don't know. Maybe I'm just not that cool to begin with. I think that's. True. I mean, I just can't even like just just watching him. I'm like fuck, like. He is insane. Like I, I'm already. I'm gonna take a nap watching his video of him working out. Yeah, it's in it, drinking a but gallon of milk a day. Yeah, and there's people that are, there's, there's just fucking freak shows out there. There are. Well, I think too. You know, it's like a, it was probably a, a gradual progression. I think that's something that you know might get missed. Well, you know, as well. It's not like just one day he was like, "Fuck, I'm gonna start training all day, every day." Like it wasn't just like went from a one hour workout per day to eight. It was probably a nice, slow, gradual process. And before you knew it, he's like, Oh, right. It snuck up on him. He's like, Oh, well, yeah, I guess I, I do train all day. Well, there's a few key points that people don't realize either that I'm going to add to this. And I think that are like, some people need to hear is one, his first time going to regionals, he made it to the CrossFit games. Yep. Two, his first time with the CrossFit Games, he got second place. Yeah, and he should have won. And then from there, got first place until he retired. Yeah. And then Ben Smith, same thing. Went to the Games his first try. Went to the Games fucking six or seven times after that. Scott Pancheck, Like, all these people who are... I mean, Matt Frazier got second his first year at the Games. All these people... If you want to make a life out of being an athlete, you need to be that type of athlete. Like... Let's say you don't make it to regionals your first year, your second year, your third year. You're still trying to make it to regionals because you want to go to the games. I got news for you, bro. Like, even if you make it to the games, you're going to be so low because you're not at that level. Because that the, those top three people are at such a ridiculous level Yep. that 
you are going to be spending all of this time and postponing so much life. Like, dude, my life didn't even start until I was like 30 years old. And that's really sad. Like I wasted so many years, but for me, I can't say wasted because everything worked out for me in a, in a, in a different way, but yeah, it did take a long time. Thing, yeah. I mean, I, I live in Newport beach where everybody here has a lot of money and I'm 31 years old and I don't own my own house. And I don't like, you know, I don't know. There, there's people that are literally like five years. not going to be, they already have a house. They already have a career. They already have all this stuff. And I'm like, all right, well I could have all that right now, but like none of that really started until like just like a year ago. Yeah. Yeah. So I wasted a lot of time and there's a lot of people, but, but I was there, I was right there at that thing. Like I, I was the alternate for the CrossFit games like four times. Mm-hmm. And really the only reason I didn't go is because of weird incidents like me threatening judges and <laughs> doing dumb shit that I was like, Oh fuck. If I just fixed that, like I would go. So it was, it was a little bit different for me, but there's so many people that are in that, like just hole in a bucket of just like, Oh fuck. I didn't go. And it's like, I can make it like, if you're not making it to regionals, like, dude, just have fun with working out. And if you make it, you make it, don't put all the stress on yourself. And people just don't understand. There's not a lot of money to be made. Yeah. That's see, that's another thing is they see the top guys making good money with sponsorships and, and winnings and everything. So they think, Oh, there's a lot of money in it. It's almost like the same thing with boxing in a way, because you see like Floyd Mayweather and you're like, Oh shit. Like there's so much money in boxing. Well, yeah, there's, there's so many people that are poor trying to make it there. Yeah. Uh huh. Yeah. I made a, I made a post like last year and I was like, Hey, listen guys, here's the deal. Go ahead and put your life on hold. Go ahead and live this dream and watch all these years go by. You're going to be in a gym for years and years and years. You're going to look back and have missed all these opportunities of like traveling and going out with your friends and having fun and like, you know, eating the fucking donut that you want to eat or whatever it is. Meanwhile, you could be in a gym that you're, you're already going to be in. You can give up a little bit of training time, just a little bit, and have one personal training client. Oh, you know what? It was two personal training clients, three days a week. You train two people three days a week at $100 an hour, and you've made $3,000 more than the third place finisher at the CrossFit Games. Yep. So you've worked six hours a week, six hours (laughs) a week for a year. And you've made three thousand dollars more, maybe five thousand, because you get twenty five grand for um, third place. Mm-hmm. And I think the two days a week at one hundred dollars an hour. I mean, a, two hours a day, three days a week for one hundred dollars an hour is thirty grand. Yeah, so five thousand dollars more. Yeah, so you're, and it's tax free. <laughs> yeah. Well, so, they see. They see um, that's yeah. an insane way of looking at it. Like. Well, if you're going to go to the games, someone's willing to pay you hundred dollars an hour to train them. Yeah. And if you can't work two hours a day, three days a week, you're already like, what the fuck? Yeah. And, you're, and if you, if you're, you just like make, do like the social media thing, like the sponsorship side of it, you'll, it's the same. Like you yeah. have just as good of a chance. It's crazy. It's fucking absolutely crazy to me that people still put all their eggs in that basket. Well, I think another thing too is cause there's not, it's not like, um, there's not like a governing body that's going to tell you that they don't want you. So like for the NFL, like if you play college football, you don't get drafted, don't get signed as an undrafted free agent. Like no team ever shows any interest in you. By the time you're like 22, you're like, okay, well, I guess I'm not playing in the NFL. See, yeah. it's not the same thing with CrossFit. You're like, well, Hey, I have another chance next year to make it. I have another chance next year to make it. Then before you know it, you're in your thirties and you're like, well, I never made it. Mm-hmm. I don't know how often that happens, but I would assume it would happen quite often. The thing that's good too about the NFL is like, let's say you do make it and you're, you sit on the bench and you never play a game in your life. You still made like half a million bucks. Yeah. Half a million bucks. Just be on the team. <laughs> you will never make a half a million dollars being, being a CrossFitter. <laughs> no. Unless you and win people, year for like five years in a row. I don't know, what do they win? What is the winnings now? Like 200,000 maybe? You get 250. 250. Yeah. So sitting on the bench, not doing anything gets more money than that. Yeah. In the NFL. And you have, Oh, I think you have a better chance of being in the NFL than being on cro- and winning the CrossFit Games. Yeah, you for sure. Do. Yeah, you definitely would. Like, think about it. Yeah, you, there's one winner every year. There's how many guys that make a half million dollars in the NFL? A yeah, lot. tons. Yeah, I mean, 
every single person sitting on the bench for every single team. Yeah, 32 teams. That's a lot, dude. Like, for those of you out there who want to be (laughs) Rich Browning, you have a better chance of being on the fucking New York Giants. Yeah, you do. You really do. (laughs) It's crazy. That has to be put in perspective. Like, yeah. You know, especially now because, you know, like, I think maybe. Early on, Rich Froning, maybe like his first year, you probably couldn't say that because you'd say, all right, well, maybe the, the competition's not quite as, as fierce. But, and it was only like 10 grand for first place. Yeah. So then, yeah, it would be now there'd be really nothing to win. So, like, less, it's less lu- lucrative to even want to do it. Yeah. Like you wouldn't even want to do it. Yeah. yeah At that so. point, 10 grand is like not even a commercial that you would sign as a football player. <laughs> well, think you, you'd probably spent almost 10 grand just like getting ready for it. Like the training yeah. and, and everything. And then the flights and the hotel, everything. It, mm-hmm. It's like you wouldn't even break even. Yeah. And when you make it to the CrossFit games, they still charge you. Yeah. It costs like, I think 500 bucks. Yeah. <laughs> Cause regionals cost like two fifty, And I think the game is like $500. It's hilarious. Yeah. Just, yeah. You, get, you got to pay to go. It's insane. <laughs> you're going to lose it's so much. Boy, if you put it that way, you're going to lose so much money. Like think of all the training, all the yeah. time that you're spending on, on training and stuff that you're not spending on your business, whether it's coaching or whatever you're doing, you're not spending on that because you're focusing on competing and you're doing, you know, all the little things and traveling and it's just, it's, it's not going to, it's not going to win. You're not going to win that yeah. way. I'm excited right now where CrossFit's going. Does CrossFit's kind of going more towards like, people are getting a little bit more educated and they understand like what they actually need. Mm-hmm. And it's, it's going back to like a lot of the like earlier principles of what CrossFit really is. So everything kind of got created by this guy, Pat O'Shea in 1969 mm-hmm. created interval weight training, which is like what Jim Jones does. If anybody knows who Jim Jones is, yeah, he's a gym in Utah and he, he actually got everybody, all shredded for the 300 movie. So I'm sure everybody knows yep, that. Yep. And um, he does a lot of interval weight training stuff, which is like you pick a movement, usually a power movement. You do a set rep scheme and you go immediately into a cardio. So whether it's Tabata style cardio, like 20 seconds on, 10 seconds off, or it's like three minutes of just like row as far as possible. And then you get a rest break and it's like a couple rounds. Yeah, and then there's like a, then there's a big, like five, six minute rest break and you do it again, but instead of a power movement, now you're doing a strength movement. So maybe it's a squat or a deadlift and you go into another cardio. It could be burpees. It could be double unders. It could be another monostructural thing like rowing or biking or something. And then basically Greg Glassman had so many clients because he was a personal trainer before he owned the name CrossFit. Mm-hmm. He was trying to do that but also in a faster amount of time so he could have people come in and out in 30 minutes. Yeah. Yeah. They had so many clients and he was like, fuck, I don't know what to do, but I don't want to give them to somebody else. I still want to charge them. I still want to have them as clients. I still want to make money. So he's like, all right, instead of that, I'm I'm just going to create like AMRAP. So Mm -hmm. let's do all that. But instead of creating all these rest breaks and this and that, I'm going to go AMRAP. So you're going to do that for 20 minutes. We're going to warm up, do that for 20 minutes. You get as many rounds as you can done. Next person. Boom. Next person. Boom. Right. Mm-hmm. And then people were like, oh, more is better. 60 minute AMRAP, this, that. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do gymnastics. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do this. And it's like, is it fun? Yes. Is it effective? It can be if you do it correctly. And then it just got kind of out of hand. But everyone now is like, dude, my whole body hurts or I'm, I don't feel motivated anymore. Like my gym's programming sucks or like, mm-hmm. or this or that. And it's just like all these different complaints. And people are getting educated and they're kind of going back to that Pat O'Shea thing. No one really knows who Pat O'Shea is, but that's really where it all started. And people are going back to that. And I make my gym do that stuff now um, a few days a week just to kind of break up the monotony of just like a long Metcon or something like that. Yeah. Do you have like a general structure that you do with your programming for the gym or is it kind of not? So like what's, what's interesting about gyms is – you have to one, fu- you have to have fun programming. Oh yeah. So like on paper, it has to look fun. So sometimes you can have something that's super beneficial, but if it doesn't look fun, no one's going to come in. Yep. So that's the, that's the reality of that. So like, is every single thing that I make so like scientifically done that it's fucking perfect? Absolutely not. Because if I did it that way, people just wouldn't show up. Like I would love to have a four by four and a meter run, 
one day with like a strike left, but nobody would ever come in. Yeah. Well, what's op- optimal on paper is great, but if no one does it, or if you don't do it, everyone listening, I mean, this applies to you too. Like you can have the most optimal training program on paper, mm-hmm. but if you don't enjoy it and it's not sustainable for you, it's worthless. Oh, dude, I can't tell you how many people come in all the time and they're following a program that they bought for like six weeks or something. Like there's guys in my gym that buy like Marcus Philly's program and they, yeah. they do it for a few weeks and they're like, dude, I hate not being part of class. I'm like off to the side, like kind of doing my own thing, like shun and fuck this, you yeah. know? And I'm like, that's the thing is like, it's all about having fun. And like, I, I call my programming, like there's an entertainment factor to it. So I think of it in such a way that you look at it, you're like, it looks really, really fun. Everyone always tells me the hardest part about my workouts is which day to take off. Yeah. Everything <laughs> looks so fun. That's so good. I, I do that. Number one. We always follow some sort of strength cycle, whether it's a press cycle or a squat cycle. Like that's one thing I'll do. I do. I never do like long cycles, like like a hack squat program that's twelve weeks long, mm-hmm. because you get new members and they come in like week six, you know, and it's like fuck. So like, yeah, yeah. I like to do four week squat cycles, like very short cycles, so people come in, they're not lost, and you can see your gains really, really quick. Um, I do a lot of EMOMs to keep people moving. Yep. Like I hate when people give you 15, 20 minutes to snatch a heavy snatch. Like there's definitely times where that's cool, but like you're going to have a lot of people sitting around. You might program like a seven set, seven sets of two rep snatch. And people might do like, some of the girls might do like three sets. Some of the guys might do like a couple sets and then hit a max. They're not even doing twos. Yeah. yeah. And it's just this open gym window of like, do whatever the fuck you want which I hate. Mm -hmm. So I get rid of that and I'll do something like two snatches every two minutes for 10 rounds. Right. So you have to move. You have no choice. Or I'll do like yesterday we did a 15 minute AMRAP of snatch and you started, everyone started at 95 and 65 and then you would do three reps and then you can add whatever you want to the bar and you have to do three reps, Mm -hmm. add whatever you want and three reps. And then your score was the weight that you finished your last three reps at. Oh, that's cool. So it promotes you to like, keep on moving so i hate when people sit around i try to force people like you're here to be told what to do and when you go out there and you tell someone that you were got a chalk it's my responsibility for you to look good yeah so i try to think of the best way i can to get people to move and keep them motivated so i do a lot of stuff like that and then like once or twice a week i do the iwt the interval weight training deal yep i do it a lot with bench usually so like tomorrow we're doing one and it's one minute of bench press at 135. So you just get as many reps as you can. Mm-hmm. And you go immediately into one minute of max calories on the row. And you're going to get a two minute rest and it's five rounds of that. That's a lot of volume. Yeah. So, I mean, that's the whole workout for the day. And then at the end, we have a skill session. It's like a 10 to one ladder of strict pull-ups and handstand push-ups. Mm-hmm. And just on your own time. So you can yeah. kind of like, even if class goes over for them, they're just, they're not in the way of everybody else. Mm-hmm. So it's kind of like a little bodybuilding day. Yeah, I like that. And the guys get super pumped on it. They love it. Oh, yeah. 100%. Yeah. So, yeah, I do stuff like that that's not like your typical programming, for sure. It's good shit. The the only thing I hate about my programming is I have programming every day. We're open Saturday and Sunday. Oh, so you do seven days a week programming. Yeah, which is very, very difficult. So what <laughs> do you, for me, mentally, yeah, what like do you, you do work out? Like uh, a couple people, like, or what do you tell people? Just take a couple of rest days or, or what? I tell everyone you take two days off a week. Okay. And I try to tell people, if you come on Sunday, like, don't come on Monday. Yeah. Because Sunday's like a big bro session. It's a monster mash. Mm-hmm. We do a bunch of stuff. And it's like, you're going to repeat one of those movements on Monday. So uh-huh. please just take it off and don't tell me I suck at programming. It's just, I have to program something. I know what you guys want on Sunday. You want to, like, die because you probably drank on Friday and Saturday and you feel like shit. Mm-hmm. So just come in and know you're not coming in on Monday. That'd be great. But they all... They all do whatever they're going to do. Like, do that's the uh, thing. Do you work out to it. yourself? I work out five days a week. That's it. Just that. Yeah. So you take two days yeah. off too. I do Monday, one Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday off, Friday, Saturday, Sunday off. Cool. Cool. When, how, how many, how long you've been owning the gym? What's it been? What'd you say? Five years? Four. Four years. That's Four years. Yeah. What was the, what was the conversation like when the, the guy from uh, MySpace, you were training him and he, uh, 
give you the money for the gym or how, how'd that go? So he would always ask me like, what do you want to do? And I'm like, honestly, I really don't know. I, I like personal training right now. I'm making good money and it's great. I would love to have some sort of career where like, I didn't have to worry about how much money I was making every month. Yep. Yep. Cause like even now, even owning the gym, I only know that I'm going to make, well, no, I'm saying it wrong, but like every month I make different amount of money mm-hmm. and yeah. I still personal train. The gym might make more money one month than another month. Um, you never have a set number. Yeah. No, trust me. Which, I get that. It's the entrepreneur life. You know what I mean? Yeah. That's the lifestyle. Like it's, it's, it is hard cause you don't, you don't ever really know. It's not like, you know, well, Hey, for the next year, I know exactly what I'm going to make. It's up and down. Yeah. I mean, there's positives to that too. Cause it's like unlimited up, but it's also yeah. unlimited down. Exactly. It could all come crashing down. It's hard for like when you want to buy a house and stuff like that. So it's like, how much money can I afford for my mortgage? Like right now it's like, oh yeah, let's just fucking do a ten thousand dollar mortgage. And then like next month it could be like, I probably should have got the five thousand dollar one. <laughs> well, even even like from an entrepreneur standpoint, like when you're going to buy a house, it's it is a little little funky too, because like it you know, with, with taxes and everything, it doesn't always show exactly what you're making, you know? Yeah. I think. So it is kind of screwy that way too. So yeah, we talked about, we talked about that. Um, so I was like, I'd like to have something more like that. Like I would love to own a gym, but I just, there's so many gyms and I'm in reality, I would never want to do it unless someone gave me like a million dollars. Yeah. And he was like, Oh really? You threw that number out there. Yeah. I just threw it out. And he's like, I can give you a million dollars. Like it was instantly. Uh huh. He thought about it for like two seconds. I was like, I could give you a million dollars if you still want to do it. And I was like, Well, I said that, but I'm not sure it's really what I want to do. <laughs> yeah. So then it was two guys. I was training two guys. The the other guy, his name is Mitch, and he's actually a billionaire with a B. <laughs> with a B. Yeah, he's got some serious cash. Um. So the two of them. The one guy just like kind of let me be. The other guy kept pushing it like, hey, man, we should do this. We should do this. We should do this. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, oh, my God. I don't. I'm like, I, I am not even going to get remotely excited until we find a space that makes sense. Mm-hmm. So in Newport Beach, we don't have a lot of big spaces. Makes sense. And if you do find a big space, it is crazy expensive. And then if you do find a big space, it's probably like a retail space. It's not. It's not like a we don't have like big warehouse type stuff. Mm -hmm. And if you like, we do, and it's like to go there, like a location is probably out of the way. Right. That's what I'm saying. Nobody really wants to go there. It's not even far, but people are kind of snooty around here to the point where they're like, I'm not driving over there. That's not where, that's not where I hang out. So Mm -hmm. I, they found me a spot. My rent is $11,000 a month, (laughs) which is insane. Yeah. Um, it was a big risk at first, but you know, Instagram was getting big and I made an Instagram CrossFit chalk and every day I'd be like, Hey guys, I just bought like 30 grand worth of competition plates, which like no one in town had ever had. Yeah. Yeah. And I was like, Hey, I just bought 10 assault bikes, 10 rowers, like all these things. And I was strategically just post different things. Like this is, this is coming, this is coming. And everybody was like, dude, this gym is insane. Yeah, yeah. And it built all this hype to where my first day being opened, I had 100 members. That's that's wild. So it started off really, really good. And I, I was never really like losing too much money because I didn't have a lot of employees in the beginning. And I didn't have as many bills as I do now. Like now I have a, a crazy cleaning bill. I pay my trainers like twice what anybody in town pays their trainers. Mm-hmm. I now have a salary now like there's a couple different things going on so i mean in reality the as the gym made money i spent all of it yeah what did what did those guys that invested what did they want out of the deal so for those of the people out there who think they want to open a gym there's a there's a few things that goes on when you open a gym which i didn't know until now but you have someone who's going to offer you money so hey dude i'll give you 200 grand and then within the next five years, I want 250 back yeah. or I want 300 grand back or whatever their, whatever their number is. And then you own the gym outright and you're good to go. However, you have the risk of not being able to pay him back. 
option number two is you have someone who's like, all right, I'll give you 50% of the gym. I get 50% of the gym. I'm going to put all the money in and you owe me the money back. And then I also will own 50% of the gym forever. Yeah. Which in your own mind, you're like, holy fuck, this guy's going to have half my gym forever. But there's a few good things that, that go with it. So my situation is a little bit different. I own 70% of the gym and my partner owns 30. Mm-hmm. The two guys in the beginning gave me the money and I also had to give them everything that I had. So by the time I opened the gym, I told you I was personal training and I was doing well. I'd saved up $60,000, okay. which I had to give them. I had to show them my bank account with 60000 and then show it to them again at zero. Oh, wow. Because so, they're like, now we, now we know you're committed. Yeah, so it's like they like owned you for it. <laughs> yeah, and my mom gave me um, $5,000 to borrow which was hard for her because like everybody in my family never borrowed money from my mom, like never paid her back. So she was, she's like terrified, but I'm like, mom, I fucking swear to God, I'm going to pay you back, which I really needed that money. So I got that and I started running the gym and originally I had 40, uh, I had 60% and those two guys had 20, Mm -hmm. 20 each. Yep. The billionaire guy basically was like, dude, this guy works really fucking hard. So he sold me his 20% for like very, very cheap. Mm-hmm. So I bought it. So now me and my partner bought it. So now I have 70. The partner has 30. He will have 30% for the rest of his life. And I'm totally okay with that. And here's why. So in my space, my rent is $11,000 a month. I signed a five-year lease. You have to show proof that you have a million dollars in a bank account Mm -hmm. to sign the lease for this building, which I did not have. Yep. Right. So for one, (laughs) I would never get in a space like this if it wasn't for my investor. Yeah. Two, I would never have the equipment and the shit about having this gym. It wasn't for my investor. And three, if you pick the right investor, you get somebody who's really smart and can help you along the way. Yeah. This guy taught me so much about business. He taught me so much about, you know, how to write things off with taxes and like what's going to happen at the end of the year and what you can branch off and do. And he taught me a lot and I really, really appreciate it. People ask me all the time, are you going to buy out your partner? His name's Aaron. And I'm like, no, I actually, I would love to have him forever. Yeah. What if, let's say you, you take option A and you're like, all right, I'm going to borrow 200 grand. I'm going to pay him back 250. No problem. I'm going to make it. Two things can happen. You can not never pay him back, mm-hmm. which would suck because that guy could sue you at that point, and which yeah. you're you have to pay this money back somehow, some way, at some point in your life. But on top of that, if you're not making the money to pay him back, you're probably losing money in your salary as well. So, like when you sign a contract with anyone, you have an agreed upon salary. So now, if you're not making money, you might not be even paying yourself. Yeah. So if you take option B, like I did. Yeah, like I get 30% forever, but if tomorrow my gym starts not making any money, I still get my salary. Yeah. Like no matter what, I get that. And I just keep telling him, man, I'm, I'm going to turn it around. I'm going to turn it around. Things are going to be okay. And there's there's a point where he could be like, you know what? Fuck you. It's over. Yeah. But well, at least I'm still getting that salary. And I can create an exit strategy. Well, plus he so has a lot skin of people, in the game too. So he's, he's kind of invested with you. He's, he has skin in the game. He's literally the only person that's super invested. Yeah. So I really think that's the best way to go. And I think a lot of people don't understand that they, they want to own the gym, but dude, I have one of the most successful CrossFit gyms in the world of all time. And it took me four years to pay my investor back. So for like two or three years, I legitimately thought I was never going to make any money. Mm-hmm. I was like, and I had a boatload of members all the time, Yeah. but you spend so much money on fucking toilet paper yeah. pens like the toilet explodes because people put too much paper in it like you know equipment breaks like you don't want to have you don't want to have shitty equipment even in your gym like when there's 30 other gyms in the area that they have an option to go to your gym better be fucking pimp when they walk in yeah not a lot of people know who 
uh, Matt Frazier is anymore or who Ryan Fisher is anymore. They want to come in, they want to see a dope gym and they want to have a good time. Yeah. Well, even if they do know who you are, it's like, that's only going to get them in the door. It's not going to make them stay. Yeah. So, I mean, a lot of people think that, you know, they're a great athlete. They're going to have a great gym. It's not the way it goes. You got to have, you got to have a great product. Um, and you have to really create a fun vibe. Like I'd almost, I would argue with anyone any day and say that the vibe in your gym is more important than the coaching in your gym. Oh yeah. yeah and I know that's kind of, it's kind of fucked up to say, we're like, Oh, well, you're going to have people get hurt in your gym like with shitty coaches. And like, no, I wouldn't want that. But if I had to pick someone that you want to hang out with on the weekend versus someone who can teach you how to snatch, I'd pick the person who wants to hang out with you on the weekend. Yeah. Cause you want that gym to become the third place, you know, the yeah. home work, and that gym, until a gym really becomes that third place, that place you want to go and hang out with, it's just that you're a dime a dozen. You can, they could switch gyms and, have, and not lose anything. They exactly. can go out somewhere else. But if they are, feel part of the community, have friends, they like hanging out there, then if they, they can't just go to another gym to work out because they're going yeah. to lose that social side of it. I, people, I tell people all the time on my social media, in my gym, I'm the first person that would be like, dude, do me a favor and go check out all the other gyms. I'll see you in a month. Like go yeah. spend a week at each one. Tell every single one that you want to talk to the owner and that you're looking for a new gym. You just want to come for a week for free. Mm-hmm. Even if you move, like right now, if I move to Texas tomorrow, I'm going to go to every gym for a week and feel it. Yep. Even if the first one I go to fucking knocks it out of the park, it's still not okay. Mm-hmm. I want to make sure that maybe the next one has a smaller park and the ball went a little farther yeah, yeah. <laughs> or like maybe, you know, there's something at another gym that they offer. Like uh, every single gym in Orange County, you're not allowed to work out on your own period. Really? No. It's class and get the fuck out at my gym. Anytime we don't have class, you're welcome to work out on your own. Yeah. For someone that could be a total game changer. Oh yeah. So sure. even if the coaching sucks, but you, but you really want to follow your own programming anyway. Like even that could be a game changer. So I, I tell everyone all the time, please go check out other gyms and people will do it. And they always come back and they're like, dude, your gym is sick. Like, <laughs> I'm like, I know I fucking told you. Uh-huh. That's so awesome. yeah, I, I'm a big believer in checking out other gyms, making sure that you know what you're, what you have. And there's no reason in having a $500 car payment and you're driving a Honda Civic when you can drive a Mercedes. Yeah. Like, there's just, there's no you're point. you're fucking being dumb staying at your gym right now if it sucks just because your friends are there like well, it, it goes back to what we said in the beginning people everybody in almost all situations settle at some point settling they, they settle on gyms too yeah <laughs> it's really really sad yeah so i mean it, my biggest piece of advice for everybody out there is to never just go to your closest gym never settle on what is happening to you at the gym like there could be a better experience out there, even if you might be one of those fucking weird people that likes people who don't even yell at you in the workout. Yeah. Like you don't want anyone to talk to you. You don't even want to be coached and whatever. And it bothers you when someone's in your face and they're coaching you and this and that. And maybe you like the gym that sucks. So, I mean, I would still, you know, look for the shittiest gym in town. Maybe that's your deal. Yeah. You might but, like it. You might enjoy something there. <laughs> you might enjoy it. It's fucking yeah. crazy, but everybody likes their own cup of tea. It's wild. So what do you, uh, what do you got planned for the podcast coming up? I know you, you partnered with Barbell Shrug now. Yeah. So, um, how'd that happen? That, that is such an exciting thing that like just, you know, has blown me away. Like I, I didn't really understand the whole podcast world. I didn't even really want to do a podcast. Mm-hmm. All of my coaches are always like, they're always like brainstorming with me on like ways they can make money and like different things. Cause they see me like branching off into all these things. Yeah. Which when I coached was never a thing. Like I, I didn't want to talk to my, my boss about anything mm-hmm. except for like, Hey, can I have more classes or whatever? But I'm always like I, one of the girls in my gym. I'm like, Hey, let's, let's do some nutrition challenges. And like with this other coach, I'm like, Hey, let's do this. Let's do that. Or maybe you should do this or that. So you can make more money and this and that. Like, my goal as a gym owner is to keep my trainers for as long as I possibly can. Yeah. Cause changing as a gym owner, that's the hardest part is keeping coaches that people love, that you love, that you respect, that you trust. That is fucking really, really, really hard. It's like, yep. I mean, it's literally like having 
you got to have, you know, three girlfriends that you really, really like yeah. at all times. And you have to keep a good relationship the whole time. Yeah. It's, it's crazy. But and then, then if you have to get rid of one, you got to start back at square one with the next a new one. <laughs> yeah. You have, to, you have to tell them everything. Right. And yeah. it might take six months before you really get to know that girl. Right. And that's kind of how coaching is too. It might take a couple of months before you really know this person. Like, are they going to start to settle? And, and, every, and everybody puts and out, this, uh, put out this uh, awesome appearance initially. Yep. <laughs> so, yeah, definitely. But uh, so you have that going We're talking on. about coaches. <laughs> <laughs> so one of my coaches, Yannick, was like, hey, dude, let's do a podcast. And I'm like, uh, I don't know. Will anybody listen to it? Whatever. Mm-hmm. And then he was like really, really into it. And I'm like, all right, cool. Let's just do it. Yeah. Let's do the first one. We'll, we'll do my life story, which is what we did for the first 20, 30 minutes of this podcast. Mm-hmm. And it went over huge. Like people fucking really, really dug it. Yeah, yeah. And then from there, I went into like this nutrition podcast, which was like nutrition for dummies. And I literally just went over every single thing that I could just say off the top of my head. I didn't study anything, nothing. I just blurted out all the most important things about nutrition in an hour. Mm-hmm. and there's so many ridiculously hysterical jokes and like all these different things going on. It's still our best episode to date. Mm-hmm. Um, and it kept kind of growing and growing and it got, it kind of got the attention of Barbell Shrug. They had me on the show. I broke all their records for best show ever. Really? And this was only a couple yeah. months ago. Yeah. So then they were like, dude, we want to have you on the show as part of our, part of our network. We're going to create this thing where we have a bunch of shows. So instead of us having one show a week, we're going to have other shows under us so that we have a show every day. Yeah. I like that idea. Um, it's pretty cool. It's a really cool idea. I've never heard anybody even doing that. No. So I know they were kind of nervous to see who would listen to the show and how many people, because they get like 50,000 listens in a week on a show. Yeah. yeah I and they get, a, they get a million downloads a month, which mm-hmm. is nuts. Yeah. So they're number one in the world for health and fitness. So we go on the show and it's been a hit. Like we're, we tie for like first or second place on the show, like on the regular. That's and nice. now I have all these just, you know, massive listen listeners like on the show, like listening to all the, everything that we have. And I just created this humongous platform and it's, it's been awesome. And I don't know, if my podcast life will always be on with them or if it'll do its own thing eventually or where podcasting will go. And, but I've really, really been enjoying it. And I think that it's because you get to talk to people about stuff you really want to hear. And like my business experience and some of the things that I've told you, you know, took me years and years and years to figure out and learn. And you just got all of it. And you know, a very short period of time. Yeah. Yeah. And plus they're fun, man. These are, yeah. fun. Like, I mean, and, and people enjoy them, but like from, I mean, everyone listening, yeah, that's great. But I do these for selfish reasons. These are fun. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and, and, sure. and how else would we have sat down for an hour? We're on the opposite ends of the country, sit down and just chat. You know? And honestly, if I never make money from the podcast, I probably keep doing it. Yeah, because sure. again, they're fun, and then again, yeah. it's like it's it's. I like to create content in in ways that one are enjoyable, but two, it's like it's it's not so much. I'm not doing it to get something out of it. Like, yeah, if, if yeah, if people love it and listening to it, and it helps grow my business, that's great. But if people just enjoy it and they listen, and I'm having fun doing it, that it's a win. It's a win win. Yeah, it's awesome. I- the only thing I get a little bit bummed out is everyone's like, oh, I have a podcast too. Or I have, oh, you know, yeah, everyone. of course. Like everyone has a podcast. It's like a me too thing now. You have a podcast? Yeah. Oh, me too. And it's like, all right. Like this podcasting has got a little out of hand, but I got lucky in the terms of, you know, um, being with Barbell Shrug, they were one of the first podcasts ever. Yeah. So now linking up with them, it basically – put me in that boat of people who were like one of the first podcasts ever. Yep. So it's not, t- it's not going to take me years and years and years to build this base. I just like instantly got it. And then two, you know, I think a lot of people who want to do podcasts, they're probably listening to this and they're like, Oh, I want to have my own podcast now. He's, they're right. You know, <laughs> it's like, all right, bro, hold on. First off, you know, 
right now we're on a microphone, which is great. But like when you have, you know, people in person and there's a lot of noise in the background, you got to spend like two grand on a nice little setup. Yep. If you really want to do it right, you got to have somebody, you know, videoing it so you can make a, a video out of it. And mm-hmm. That costs a lot of money and you have to have a write up, which takes some time. And you mm-hmm. also have to have, you know, Instagram, you know, I don't know if you've been on my Instagram before, but I have like really professional, like slide up things and yep. different imageries and different things that, the whole production of having a really good podcast is an, is as much of an investment as, you know, starting your own business. It can yeah. be. And I think a lot of people, they just want to have one. And it's like, honestly, if you really want to have one that bad, like, you know, reach out to somebody who has a huge following who wants to do it with you or something like that, or just listen to them. Like it's, yeah. it's equally as fun to listen to one and have absolutely no part in it. <laughs> yeah. But being part of a gym, like it's great being part of a gym, but owning one is nowhere near as fun. Yeah, yeah. Well, another thing too with with podcasting is everyone wants to have one, but until they see, like you said, the work, there's actually work involved. Like, yeah, it's fun. It's a lot of fun. Yeah. But it takes time. Well, even even with this, like it's like scheduling's a pain in the ass, you Mm -hmm. know? And then again, everybody has a podcast. A lot of times when you're trying to get guests, like I have to like almost sell people on, listen, I've done like 130 episodes. I've had you know x amount of people who are big names in the fitness industry this is legit you have to like sell people on it but if you're just starting out how are you going to get guests like no i had someone hit me up the other day where they were I was, they were like hey i want to have you on my podcast a lot of people think i can't get you on it and i just really want to prove them wrong and i'm like yeah dude i have no problem being on your podcast i was like i don't want to be rude but can you tell me how many listeners you get like in a month on your podcast yeah. and it was like you know 20 people or something and i was like <laughs> I was like, I wrote back and I was like, dude, I'm really sorry. Like, I don't want to sound like prima donna, but I was like, I can't do a podcast like that right now. Yeah, it's just on time. The time consuming part of it. Like, if you even just had a couple hundred, I'd be down. But like, mm. like 20 people, I just can't do. Like, I'd, I'd rather go train somebody or do something that. You should have you been know. like, listen, dude, if you can get your whole family to listen and get up to 50, <laughs> talk, <laughs> talk to me. <laughs> I feel yeah. bad being an asshole now. <laughs> It's crazy. It's crazy. A lot of people reach out. I, I'm, I'm always, you know, excited. People want to reach out to me about their podcast for sure. Yeah. Like, uh, I definitely looked you up and checked you out and make sure you're legit. Sure I was legit. Kind of like that. It definitely helps. I was going to say, uh, you had to make sure I was legit, right? Yeah. Well, I, actually, I like that because, I mean, I don't want to waste people's time, you know? Like, yeah. you know what I mean? Like, shit, I want, I want, another thing too is this actually, it, I'll admit this has happened to me where I, I don't know if people have not looked me up or whatever, but they just agree to it. But then they like get on and you can already tell like they're kind of like half assed about it. They're yeah. like, well, I don't know. They don't think it's like worth their time, but they want to say yes to it anyway. So they kind of just are half in. <laughs> which See, I don't and care. I don't care who the fuck that person is. I hate them right now. Yeah. So like, I don't ever want to be in the position where anyone thought I was half assed at anything right yep. i would have nothing i have if, if no one gets if anyone listening to this podcast gets anything out of it it is to be your best person the best version of yourself at all fucking times like i didn't know that the, the guy i was training owned myspace i didn't fucking know that yeah i didn't even know he had money he drove an f-150 and wore like fucking jean shorts to our workout <laughs> sessions he yeah. looked like a homeless person like yeah. not only that but like I didn't know that, you know, all this shit that I was going to do was going to, you know, get me this, you know, very nice girl to like, let me sleep on her couch when I had nothing. And these people to let me work out in their gym that led me to the couch, you know, and, you know, maybe the person who knew I was fucking stealing food at Whole Foods just liked me, <laughs> just yeah. never told the cops on me. Or like, there's a lot of things that people are watching, like people are fucking watching at all times, like. I could have no idea right now and you could be like, this could be like a whole fucking facade and you're really like, you know, a billionaire who owns this yeah. massive company and you're just like, you know what, dude, you killed the podcast. You were super honest and I think you're great and I want to have you be part of this giant thing. Like, you yeah, never or, know. Or someone could, be, that person could be listening. You know, we don't know. Or, you know, something really great could happen to you in the next couple of months or a year or whatever and you're like, you know, you know who I want to help me with this? That guy... Brian yeah. Fisher was super dope, you know? Yeah, and on the and flip like, side, the, the dude, I'm not going to name names, but, like, there was a couple people, like, I don't know, maybe, like, two or three people who literally came on the podcast, and these are big names, too, 
And halfway through, I almost wanted to be like, listen, dude, I didn't need you to come on this podcast. So if like, this yeah. is what you're going to do, like, I would just soon not do it. Like, yeah. well, I didn't, I was professional. We just kept going, but like, well, yeah. And if something happens in two years, those are the people I'm like, yeah, probably not going to ask them to do anything. Yeah. <laughs> so, I mean, I'm, I want to kill your podcast every time for sure. Yeah. Like well, at anyone's just, podcast. What's the, the age old uh, saying is like how you do anything is how you do everything. You know, yeah. I believe in that. Like, if you're going to do something, fucking crush it. Like, don't, like, go to the work. If you're going to work out, fucking crush it. If you're going to do a podcast, yeah. fucking crush it. Like, it's just, yeah. that's how you live your life. For sure. I think that's definitely, definitely such, such an important thing. And I think that's the biggest thing about coaches is a lot of coaches are there temporarily. They know that there's another step. Or, like, mm-hmm. the person at McDonald's, like, knows there's another step. But, like, I can't, I can't even tell you how many stories I've heard of like people working at McDonald's who got corporate jobs. Yeah. Cause somebody's like, you're such a nice person. Cause you fucking crush it here. Like I actually like have a job for you. Yeah. Like, I've, I've heard of that happening and I've heard of like just some of the craziest things. Like it, it, even when I first opened my gym and I'm coaching classes, like people would give me opportunities for other things that I would, I would take on or, um, you know, like events that I could go to. Hey, I'm, we're throwing this huge party. All these people are going to be here for this and that. Maybe you can gather some clients or maybe just network and, you know, meet some people. And it's crazy. You might meet yeah. somebody who completely changes your life at any point in time. Yeah. And you, you'll never do it by half-assing shit. <laughs> you'll never get there. It's I'm actually like, I, every single day I wake up, I'm terrified to half-ass something like, Oh yeah. I'm actually scared myself. of myself. I catch myself sometimes. Like I'll be, even if I'm just sitting at my desk working, I'll be like, oh man, I'm not really, I'm not really crushing this. I need to like take a step back and get my game face on. It's getting loud in my gym. So I'm just yeah. going to like move a little bit over here. Well, it's all right, dude. This is, this has been great, man. This has been a fun podcast. Uh, how can, how can people get more information about you? So you guys can follow me on Instagram. It's Ryan Fish, R-Y-A-N-F-I-S-C-H or the gym, which is CrossFit Chalk. Exactly the way it sounds. Um, if you want to follow my online programming, which we have like about a thousand people doing it right now, you just go to our website, crossfitchalk.com, click on the links, uh, to follow to the online program and you get a mobile app and you get to follow all the workouts we do in the gym. You can compare your scores to people all over the world, which not a lot of people like love to do really. They don't really care about that. They just want to see the workouts and follow something for $20. Um, and then, and yeah, that's pretty much it. Um, I have my own podcast called real chalk. That is part of the Shrugged Collective on iTunes and any other platform. And I travel all over the country and I'm doing podcasts. So if any of you guys out there want to be on the show, let me know. Or if you have anybody that you really want to hear on the show, let me know. And, uh, and yeah, I've been awesome. fortunate enough to have this great life and share it with everybody else. Awesome. I'll put all the links to that shit in the, in the show notes. Thanks, bro. I really, really appreciate it. Awesome, man. This was great. I hope you enjoyed this episode of the Absolute Strength Podcast. I know I had a ton of fun producing it for you. And before you go, if you could just drop me some feedback, I'd love it. I love reading your feedback. So you can go over to iTunes, leave a five-star rating, write a little review of what you think of the podcast. I absolutely love it. I read every single one. But it's cool if you don't want to do that. I get it. I get it. No one wants to really go out of their way to, to do anything, let alone write a review. But I want to get your feedback. So send me, drop me a line on Instagram at Hunt Fitness or on Facebook, Kyle Hunt, or on Twitter or send a, a pigeon or something. I don't, I don't know. I just want to hear your feedback. So if you want to give me some feedback, let me know what you think. Hit me up on Instagram at Hunt Fitness. And before you go, I have one last thing. One last thing I want to say. I have a program I want you to check out. It's actually called the Absolute Strength Program, and the link is in the show notes. It's a program I designed to help increase my own squat bench and deadlift. And I got pretty strong off of it, and I think you're going to like it. It's a, it's a great book. Thousands of people have got amazing results from it. It's in the show notes. All right, guys. Until next time. Until next episode. Peace.